up, virtual family? Welcome back to another episode of the Virtue Way Podcast, season two. Thank you guys for your continuous support as we've been going through this season. You guys have been super awesome in the comments i'm seeing all the amazing support that you guys are giving how you guys are loving the topics how you guys are loving the guests so this has just been amazing guys you guys have been blessing my heart so much and i'm just happy that you know you guys are being blessed and i'm happy that you're sharing this and i'm happy that you are guys that you guys are finding a community here and you guys are finding vulnerability and boldness and all that good stuff so thank you remember guys to keep sharing to keep posting to keep just sharing it with people commenting leaving reviews on the streaming platforms if you're on youtube all that good stuff make sure you do it because it just helps us to further the movement it helps more people to be able to hear and see the amazing things that god is doing for virtue so i thank you guys in advance so without further ado guys i'm super excited for this episode because the guest that we have today is someone that i absolutely love dearly she is a woman of god she is a businesswoman she is a cancer conqueror she is a mother she's a mentor she gets back to her community she is just all that in a bag of chips plus the soda and the candy y'all <laughs> so i was just super excited to have her so without further ado let's give it up for Miss Lily. Hey guys, I'm so happy and blessed to be here. Thank you for being here. I'm excited. I'm I'm very excited. excited. I'm so excited, y'all. This is going to be so good because the type of person Lily is, like she is just raw. She just gives you all of that unfiltered and we love that. And as you guys been seeing from all of the other episodes, we've just been pouring out and it ain't going to stop, y'all. We're going to keep getting into that. So Lily, tell the people a little bit just about yourself, who you are and like a little bit of your journey. Just give the people a little spill about you for a second. Okay. So Lily Ennis, born and raised in the Boogie Down Bronx. I'm a New York City girl, now transformed Connecticut cutie. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Connecticut for too many years now for me to just um, say the Bronx, but um, born to amazing parents who always taught me good work ethic, um, taught me that education was something that no one that can, you know, can take from me. I attended Sacred Heart University. That's kind of pretty much what brought me to Connecticut. And uh, my senior year of college, got pregnant with my baby boy, my firstborn, DJ Bam Bam. And it's been quite of a journey. Uh, from there, you know, I did pretty well for myself. But for me, it was always about what's the next level up? What's the next flip? And so I've had quite an interesting journey. Um, definitely conquered breast cancer 16 years now healed god is good yes and in the process of that that really was a moment a defining moment moment for me in my life because it was from there where i would say that was my first really big hurdle to come over and i have these things called lilyisms mm -hmm. right so one of my favorite lilyisms is everything comes to promote me and you know i realized that <clears throat> what was happening in that moment was not happening to me, it was actually happening for me. Mm -hmm. And so with going through breast cancer, what happened was the company that I was working for, they actually laid me off. And under the American Disabilities Act, it's illegal for them to do that. And so I sued them. And that's when I was extremely humbled because that's when I realized that it's not really what you know, but rather who you know, Right. Um, because I lost the case. And it wasn't because I wasn't right. It was pretty much because my little lawyer money couldn't compete with their big hotshot lawyer money. And because of that, that's when it's almost like my full exposure to how harsh life can really be. Okay. And But it created this hunger inside of me. Like, what's next? What are you good at? And then from there, uh, my big, big six-figure check came from the industry of network marketing, yeah. which is how I met you yeah and a lot of my lifelong friends that oh my god i can't even ever replace the value that i received from that and from there it was just about okay not being comfortable not having all your eggs in one basket yes. and then from there i got into business coaching life coaching becoming an author becoming a speaker becoming a trainer um starting my uh, trucking and logistics company, yes. uh, starting my credit enhancement company and lending. And it just, everything just snowballed from there. And so who would have thought that all these experiences would have come from what someone else would have deemed as a bad experience, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So 
That's been yeah. good. Me and, the show. and I'm a mom of two amazing boys. I know I mentioned my firstborn, but I also have, um, I have, I can't believe I was saying the other day, I am now the mom of a 20 and a 14 year old. That sounds insane. And don't look like it. I'm going to like it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So as you guys can see, she wears many different hats. But one hat that she didn't really talk too much about is that you were actually a wife. Yeah. You were oh a God. wife. Look, look, <laughs> you see how quick she forgot that? She was I forgot a about that. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. What was it like for you being a wife? Like, how old were you when you actually got married? You had to change my position for this. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to talk about me as a wife. Okay. So I became a wife at a very young age, actually. Um, I've always believed in marriage. If we look at today's little girls, I almost think it's sad because I was the little girl that magazines were really big in my generation. And I used to always rip out magazines about what I wanted my wedding dress to look like. So I was really big on visioneering even before vision boards and stuff was, was a thing. thing. Right. And... I always knew that God designed me to be a wife. Even in my single stage right now, I know that God designs me to be a wife and that I still carry myself as a wife. So when a man meets me, he meets a wife already. Right. right. Nobody needs to build me as a wife. I'm built. So good. Right. So at a very young age, I remember being in college and <clears throat> being with my ex-husband at the time, although we were not married yet. I was cooking meals. I was like doing just wifely duties because that's what I knew. You right. know, I saw my grandmother be a wife. And although my mother's, my mother and my dad's marriage didn't work, um, I knew what, how we were trained to be. And so at a very young age, I was married. And I. Now what's young? What's young? Oh my God. I got married. I was married with a with a with a mortgage and a home and and a child at 25 years old. Okay. So I started that journey of life very young. Granted, it didn't work out, but being a wife, I felt was something that was honorable. Yes. Even when I was working my businesses, you saw right. me in a season where I was really grinding and working towards that road to a milli. Like I need to hit my million dollar mark, and I was doing presentations. I was working all day, still being a mom catering to my children, catering to my husband, still coming home, making sure dinner was made. If I had to cook dinner at the crock pot at like 5 a.m. or whatever the case may be. And not that being a wife is all about cooking dinner because as a wife, I also purchased my husband's first turntables as a DJ. Wow. Right? So I was a wife before I was a wife, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And I did it not for so much him. I did it for me because that's who I know. That's who I feel is what a woman should be and how a woman should you know, conduct herself or do certain things. And um, I was on the grind and still making sure that I was catering, you know, to everyone. I will say the one error I made while I was a wife was hmm. not putting myself first. Okay. So that's why I have a saying now that self-preservation is key. So I was being everyone, I was being Bam's uh, mom, Lando's mom. I was being my um, Big Lil's daughter. I was being Raul's daughter. I was being Orane's wife. But I was being so many things to everyone, but I wasn't being Lily first. So there wow. was a point where I felt that I lost my name. It was like, oh, she's this, she's this. No, 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 no. Now she's Lily. Mm -hmm. And Lily has to come first. And Lily will give to everyone from Lily's overflow. But Lily has to first, first feed herself first. And I look back. It's funny. I look back at certain pictures. Like I was trying to create a reel the other day. And there was a point in time where I was smiling. And you can see the picture smiling. But I can identify that one season where I felt I was losing myself. Wow. And I remember having that defining moment as a wife where I was trying to hit that that financial goal so bad. And I remember coming into the house and I remember my ex-husband saying to me, because, you know, he's Caribbean. Culture has a lot to play into a lot <laughs> yes. of things. And I remember him saying, yeah, gone all day. And me, they are hungry. And this and this and that. Ray, 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 right? So I'm not Jamaican, by the way, but he is. <laughs> And I left food, but it was in the fridge. But because it wasn't in the microwave, shared out and ready to heat up. And he was like, and then dishes been in the sink all day. Mind you, I was coming home with my children from a right. presentation at midnight, mm -hmm. exhausted, right. but proud that I'm like out here on the grind. And I looked at him, not going to lie, I cursed him out. And 
I said, you have to identify a shackle when it clanks. Wow. And I realized that, that ma- wow. at that moment, my marriage was no longer serving me. And I felt like the person that I was married to was almost like jealous of the success that I was having. And so in that season, then I started to put myself first. Then it was like, oh, I started telling my kids, uh, it's a fend for yourself kind of day. I got stuff to do. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing with, you know, my husband at the time. And when that change and shift started to happen, I started noticing how people either gravitate to that and will step in and help and pour into you equally as well. Or when someone starts to grudge you wow. for putting yourself first. So being a wife had many stages. And unfortunately, there were just a lot of things that happened. Can I say what happened? Okay, we're going to get there. We're going to get, okay. get there. I don't want <laughs> to say too much. much yet. <laughs> right. But there were certain things that happened and there are certain stages that you go through life as a wife where you'd be surprised what the outcomes are. Wow. So it's something that you said to me that really stuck out. A few things, but one thing, the first thing I want to touch on is when you spoke about being a wife before you were a wife. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, as women, we kind of feel like we need to prove ourselves to kind of earn that ring. I mean, that's what I observe. That's just like, okay, if I do all of these things, then he will see my value. Then he will want to, you know, propose to me. But I also feel that when you do too much, too soon he might feel like okay if you're already doing this for me then why do I need to put a ring on your finger because nothing is going to be different and I think that's why now people don't value marriage the way it used to be before because it's like okay well we living together we sleeping together you're cooking you're cleaning we got kids we, we're doing everything that married people do so what difference is it going to make if I marry you can you speak a little bit on being a wife before the wife and how it could be I don't know, maybe a good and a bad thing, or is it more bad than good? Like, speak on that. Release me, girl, (laughs) I'm ready to talk, right? Um, There's pros and cons to everything in life, right? And with everything, there's moderation and adjustments. There is a huge difference Mm. between being a wife that's a wife in her DNA and her behavior and her character and her prayer life and everything, right? In all aspects, there's a difference. You, A man either knows when he sees a woman, this is a wife, and there's a difference between a wife and a pick-me bitch. Okay, come on. <laughs> a pick-me bitch is saying, okay, this is a man that hasn't... See, there's a lot of men that claim they want wives, but they're not husbands. Come on. Right? Ooh. There's a lot of men who want wives, but they don't even come assembled as a husband already. So you have to be careful when you're selecting these men because women are prone to being nurturers and they're prone to wanting to fix things. Yes. So don't allow the nurturer and the fixer in you to feel like, okay, this is not your project. Mm -hmm. This is my bear. I'm going to be a builder bear. And now I'm, you know, uh, doing all these things because I want someone to pick me. I Mm. want someone to love me. I can change him. I want to prove myself because let me tell you something. There's women out here who don't cook, who don't clean, who don't do anything and they'll take your man. All right. So all of that, you have to do it because that's in your DNA. You are when a man is a man and he's and he operates in his masculinity. Women by nature are multipliers. So anything that a man does, a woman is naturally going to want to do back and give back in a mighty way. So the better a man treats me, the more I want to be that wife and I want to tend to him. The more I want to rub your feet because you, I see you working hard. Yes. The more I want to make sure that if I'm busy, your plate is already made, honey, it's in the, it's in the oven or it's in the microwave waiting for you the more a woman wants to do those things. But when you are doing those things, not because a man has led you first and now you're you're multiplying what he has given you, then now what you're doing is instead chasing a man. And when wow. you chase things, things run away, away from, from you. you. Yep. Come on. Come on. Come you in here. Day, you, you come, come on in here. Come on in here. So something, so something also too that you said, you know, in that one situation with your ex-husband, you're coming in from a long day. You're coming in with the kids at that. And he's expecting certain things to be there for you. What I found is especially like women like us in business, business owners, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, grinders out here getting it out of the mud. I would say we do have that soft side to us, but we're also to be successful in the business, the level of success that we've had, 
You know, we don't, we can't depend on anyone else. And we have to take care of ourselves first, essentially, to then be able to take care of other people. So back in the day, you know, when the men would come home from work and the woman's there in her, in her trench coat with her lingerie on, dinner is cooked, house is clean. I think that was much different back then because she wasn't out getting, you know, she wasn't the breadwinner. She wasn't doing those things. So I think now where, you know, we're out, we are the breadwinner. Like, yeah, husband, you had a long day at work, but so did I. Mm -hmm. I had a long day of phone calls. Mm -hmm. I had a long day of emails and trying to figure out how are we going to make money, how we're going to pay the bills, because a, a lot of men these days can't even, you know, supply and breathe the breadwinner to even pay the bills by themselves. So now the woman, I feel like women are doing a lot more work than maybe they have done in the past. I think that has t taken away from maybe what they can provide for their family. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, you know, being the woman who is also the breadwinner, but also feeling like, ah, uh, I'm the breadwinner, but I just worked a 12 hour day in my business. I've taken care of the kids, but now I still got to clean. Now I still got to cook because I have to provide for my husband. Can you speak on that a little bit? I think that the biggest misconception nowadays is that um, we don't like gender roles. I mm. would love to have a gender role. I think that all too many times women nowadays almost act like they're at war with men. Wow. And wow. I think that that's what's destroying marriages now. I wouldn't mind being a soft woman. I wouldn't mind doing these things. But if in the moment we cannot because I have to work and and some of us like working like we have we have things that are innate in us that we want to accomplish and I don't think that a woman should have to not do those things just because a man is providing but I think that there is a double standard now with women okay. because it's unfair for us to say well I can't cook and I can't clean and I can't tend to the kids and I need help but then again I won't dare touch something on my car if it's messed up mm. I expect a man to do it <laughs> all right now you know i'm not gonna do heavy lifting wow. i don't even want to take out the garbage so it's unfair for women nowadays to say well i shouldn't have to do this i shouldn't have to do that but then you still when it comes time and you want a man to be a man come on you need a man to be a man right. so by all means i love my gender roles however i think that we need to forget this war of men versus, versus woman. woman and what you need to be looking for is a true partnership yeah. Yes. Because yes. if in the moment my husband cannot, I need to do mm -hmm. what think about it from a, a physical disability standpoint. Right. You expect your man to be a provider. You expect him to be strong. You expect him to protect you. What if one day your husband has injured his back? I saw that happen with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. My grandfather had to have um, he's a blacksmith. So uh, literally a truck fell on him or some wow. massive piece of equipment and he had to have surgery all up and down his spine where it was fused and he was disabled for about two years wow so imagine now a man that lifted everything did everything she covered him in that season until he got strong again that's a partnership yes there have been couples where if one person is laid off or can't that other spouse is supposed to cover it's a partnership and so we've got so caught up in masculinity, femininity, man versus woman, all this stuff that we forgot that when you get married, you and you become one. one. Yep. So it's all about what mutually benefits the household. If in that yeah. moment I'm working 12 hours, the next man that I select, he has to be able to look at that and say, it's OK. Yeah, I'm going to buy I'm going to do takeout for us today because right. what if he doesn't know how to cook? Mm -hmm. That's OK. But he still has to cover me. And I am also equally expected to cover him. him. And we've lost that. Yeah. And that's why we're losing in relationships. Yeah. Because everybody wants to be everybody wants to be a social media meme. What about real life? Real life. Because when those real life struggles hit you in my previous marriage, the one thing I will say about my ex-husband is there's been there were times when he was laid off and there was times where I was laid off. There was times when we were both struggling financially. And in that moment, we were each other's covering mm -hmm. and we've lost that. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I think it's more so because people want to be they want to look attractive on the outside. A lot of women want to be like, well, my man pays all the bills. He buys me whatever I want. I have the biggest ring. I don't and have to these do anything. People don't know who they are. They just want to be on they social see. media, front end, lying. Like, if you really take 
all the all the lights, all the cameras, all the Facebook likes, all the if you take all of that away and you ask a man today or a woman, it's very seldom that they will have what they and inspect in their mind and their heart what they truly want or desire out of a relationship. Right. They don't even know. They don't know. Because you know why they don't know? Because they don't know themselves. Yes. Cause see, you're you're fronting on social media of putting this like people have it this misconception good. of Oh, she's so alpha. She would never submit or surrender. You, you don't, don't know, know me. Yeah. You don't know me. I've been a kitten, baby. I will fetch your slippers. What you want, honey? And you would never expect that from me. Because you don't give that to every man because every man does not deserve that. But guess what? It's also because certain things are meant to be kept in the household. And that too. Y'all put but everything on social media. Mm -hmm. I don't need to tell you how I am with my man. You yeah. don't even need to know I have a man. Mm hmm I let social media know I got a man when I become a wife. All right. When Period. On. Because I have so much to show you outside of what my relationship status is. Mm -hmm. Everything is just such a front nowadays. People don't even know themselves. I, I really hope they get it together. They, I and I hope this helps them get it together. Because <laughs> that, all they got to do is the open their ears, open their hearts, and it will help them. Okay. So one thing you did say, though, um, is that when you were in your previous marriage, that, you know, there were times where you guys covered each other. So would you say that, that did that there were blessings that did come out of your marriage obviously your kids yes Child. but when i because you know and i'm talking more from that biblical standpoint like a man that finds a wife finds a good thing he he obtains favor do you feel that your marriage obtained that favor that god you know wants to come out of marriage i know for a fact my ex-husband i was his favor i was <laughs> <laughs> I was that man's muse, baby. That He stopped playing music differently when I was gone. I'm just being honest, right? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that that was happening. And I know for a fact that there were certain opportunities and favor that fell on our household okay. when we were operating the way we were supposed to operate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, when things didn't work out, that stopped. But it didn't stop for me. Wow, because that's who you are. That's who I am. That's who you are. Yeah, I, I like that because I think, you know, people have forgotten that there is a certain blessing that comes from marriage. And it doesn't mean that er everybody is to be married. But, you know, there's blessings for the unmarried and they are there are blessings right. for the married. So I, I think it's important for people to hear that even from you being, you know, divorced, at least they know, OK, there are certain blessings that did come from that. Absolutely. My children are my favorite. Look at them. They're my fruit. Mm -hmm. If you look at both my children they are very very blessed very very talented people and that's why it was so hard for me to walk away from my marriage and although I was unhappy and mentally I was clocked out and ready to go mm -hmm. it wasn't until I went to the summit remember yes that I was prophesied that he said God honors you to leave your marriage but he caused you to never look back when I said when that man said never look back that's all I need. I'm not Lot's wife. I am not looking back. I am yeah, not I'm going to turn into no salt now. No, no. And I literally, like, just hearing that confirmation from God was everything I needed. And I think that's why when you're going through a difficult situation, it is so critical, especially in your relationship, especially for people who are married, to go to God about things. Because a lot of times you will go to your friends and they be like, girl, leave that man alone. But they taking that, they nigga back a million times. I mean, so why are you telling me to leave mine, right? right? I was listening to God in that season. Okay. I wanted to obey God. And I grew up, I had a certain religious paradigm. So I grew up Catholic. And they stress a lot, like, no, no divorce. divorce. Like, mm -hmm. I'm talking about big time. It's like one of the biggest taboo things. So I grew up with that paradigm, like, no, for better or worse, you make it work. It doesn't matter. And this man did so many things to me that I was just like, no, like, I, I can't continue to be in this marriage. And I remember being so upset. And the only reason why I was staying was because of my faith. I didn't want to dishonor God. I didn't want to disobey God. And I was like, what if we're that couple that can make it through this storm and show and bring hope and light to other people? But then by the same token, as someone who was really big into women empowerment, I was like, what if I'm teaching other women to settle? Oh, that's so good. It was so hard. Yeah. But because I went to God about all my issues and I said, you know what? I'm really going to hone in on this and I'm going to expect God to give me the answer. I know God will give me the answer. When I walked into the summit, I had no idea that that's what they were going to talk to me about. And once I got that revelation, I said, it was no question. Maybe I, it's almost like my tears had dried up 
My biggest issue was not leaving him. It was just deciding whether I was dishonoring God. God. Right. Right. And that's good that you had that in mind. And another thing, too, is that when you said that even though things were going left, you still were that person mm -hmm. because you knew your commitment, you knew your covenant. But let's fast forward to the divorce mm -hmm. now. OK, so what kind of like aside from you getting that confirmation, obviously you needed that confirmation because that was a direction you were heading in. What made things really turn turn for you? So when I started making lots of money, mm -hmm. okay, the relationship started changing. Wow. When I was my ex-husband's manager, his biggest cheerleader, when everything was about building his business, wow. everything was good. Mm -hmm. When I was that mother that was busting my behind, you know, doing all my charity work because I, I was involved in a lot of organizations aside of business. When I was doing business, when I was doing charity work, when I was catering to him when I was with the children, when I was basically running myself raggedy with all my goals, it was okay. Mm -hmm. But when Lily said, hold on, it's me. I got I have to meet this goal. I have a vehicle. I have an opportunity when, cause remember initially when network marketing, he didn't want me in the yeah. marketing, but I was like, well, I'm doing it anyway, mm -hmm. because when hey, you know that, that car, <laughs> when you get that car, <laughs> And so when you know something's good for your household, you have to do it. Like I see relationships sometimes, and this is the problem with women that follow God sometimes. They follow God and they think that following God equals following men blindly as well. Wow. So I know someone personally, they are an accountant. Okay. She is strong in finances. Her husband is not. He has brought them down a rabbit hole in a bad place several times. But when decisions are to be made, it's his say. Wow. So we equally need to stop being the women of God that are not saying, hey, this is my strong suit. I got this. I need you as my husband to trust, trust me on me. this. You're mm -hmm. still the leader. But in this aspect, I'm strong here. Let me be our covering mm -hmm. because God sent a woman and a wife as a helper. Uh, help so me. let yeah. me help our family. Yeah. But so many women won't even stand up and say, no, baby, you wrong mm -hmm. because they want to follow God. But you're not really following that. First of all, how can you follow a man and say that you're following God if he's not even following God? Okay, that part. But, <laughs> but <laughs> let's get into it. Let's get into it. So I say all of that to say that in the marriage, once I started being more of a leader, like, no, you're not leading me down the right wow. path. No, this is not what God designed. No, this is not how it's supposed to be. No, God didn't make you uh, get, get stuck in the club in Philly and not come home. That's not of God. So you're not leading me the way that I need to lead. You're doing stuff. And long story short, my instincts were right. So if you feel that gut feeling, you're not crazy. Come on. Because a man, will, a, a man that's not following God will make you feel like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. And so... There was infidelity. There was infidelity to the point that there was two children. Wow. Outside of the marriage. Imagine how many women stay in situations like that because they're like, God, God, God. God didn't oh. tell you to be no dummy and God didn't tell you to be no doormat either. Mm -hmm. God told you to be honored. God told you to be revered. God told you to be a Proverbs 31 woman where your value is more than rubies. God yes. told you that you will be the blessings for your husband and your children. And now you're letting this man treat you like you're nothing. No, 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 no. That's not of God. Mm -mm. So at that point, I was like, I'm out. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to play me like I'm not that. And, and you are that. All the way. Mm -hmm. And some. And some. All of it. <laughs> and it's so crazy that you say that because, you know, like I always say, you know, I, I, I do my best to not speak on marriage because I've never been married. Mm -hmm. But from my observation, I am seeing a common theme where it's like it's settling. You know it's what it so is? I think settling. that women of God have found themselves to say, OK, marriage equals now I have to be a martyr. No, mm -hmm. you don't have to die. You don't have to die because of your marriage. Your marriage is supposed to bring you fruit, fulfillment, joy. You're supposed to be protected. And when it says it says protection, it doesn't mean, oh, okay, you're going to beat up this guy for me. It means protecting my emotions yeah, as well. Protect my heart. Protect, protect my, my soul. Yes. You know, so that we can both 
end up in glory with God. You get what I'm Come saying? On. Like protect all of that. Protect our family. Protect generations to and come. don't get me wrong. We all mess up in marriage and we all fall from grace. And I don't believe that just because you've suffered one hurdle that, you know, whether it be infidelity, whether it be something else that the marriage is over. But I'm talking about blatant disrespect. Yeah. Don't cover that and say, oh, because God. No, because God didn't tell you to go take shit from a man. Yeah. But also, too, another thing what I've noticed is that there has been a trend in women glorifying divorce. Mm. And, you know, I understand things don't work out. And I understand that women want their power back. They want to show that they're strong. They want to show that they're bold. They want to show they want to show these things. But I feel like it has become a very big trend for women to really be glorifying divorce. Do you think that? that and I'm not going to say all women. I can't generalize it. But, you know, women are now. And I don't know if it's because, like, I'm breaking free. Like, you're going to see I am every woman. But don't you think that kind of does more harm than good? What, what are your thoughts on I that? I think that it's a lot to go through a divorce. I think that um, I think that if women... First of all, I'm really big on letting people do the foolish stuff they want to do. <laughs> not my monkey, not my circus. I really don't care. But I know for a fact that there were a lot of people that were encouraging me to have a divorce party. Wow. I didn't want to. Mm. It's not that I didn't feel freedom or liberated or happy to remove my fr myself from the situation. But you also have to remember I had children and... If I want to teach them how beautiful marriage is and the sanctity of marriage, I never want to put their father in a bad light, which is why I've said, listen, a lot of people's reputations is saved because I'm an honorable woman and I've Come kept on. my mouth shut. Come on. Um, but the mature part of me just says, what do I gain from bashing him? Right. You know a lot of my personal stuff and I've been very hush about yes. it. Um because what do I gain? I'm I'm a whole story on my own. Yeah. I don't need him to be the storyline. And I think that if you ask me my opinion, which you are, I think that the women that are glorifying divorce is because really it's um, smoke and mirrors. You're yes. still hurt. You still yes. are healed. Yes. Like you're still in your healing stage. And baby girl, if that makes you feel better and gets you to the next stage, then go ahead. But for me, I can see beyond it and I can st still see that there's a lot of hurt there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that because it's just like, why would you go glorify, glorifying that when you know that that is probably still something that you still want? Mm -hmm. You know, like the, that marriage is probably something that you're still yearning for. So why are you glorifying divorce now? It's one thing to say, yeah, I'm free. I'm liberated. Maybe yeah, I got out of this bad situation. But I have noticed a common theme in like, you know, a lot of women during their divorce time just making it seem like that's the best thing. And now I, I do believe that a lot of people go into marriage kind of expecting that there's a chance that there might be divorce. I think everyone goes into mm -hmm. marriage now kind of expecting like, well, if it works out, oh, then yeah. uh, I'm oh gonna, my God, and I'm so just terrible. like, what happened to for, forever, right? Like good or bad, death to, I like, that's in the vow. So I think everyone kind of just, that's why there's so much divorce now. It's like, okay, well, this person did wrong. Well, I'm out. I know for me, before I got divorced and a lot of people felt like I should have left like sooner ASAP, mm -hmm. it's because I wanted to cross every T and dot every I. Okay. Explain I, that. Explain that. So for example, I went and I spoke to my pastor. I asked for her opinion. I asked for her counsel. I went and I went to a therapist. I wanted to make sure psychologically, emotionally, everything, I was okay with the decision. Mm -hmm. And I was still struggling with it. I went and read books. I went and hired a coach on top of the therapy. I went and did everything. I spoke to my children. I spoke to my family. And then ultimately, I received my confirmation at the summit. Like, that's all I really mm -hmm. needed to hear. But at least I can say... If this man tried to come back, because I knew I wasn't going to be the one that got away. You mm -hmm. know, every man has that, oh, that's that woman that got, got away. away. If I was indeed, he said that, no, 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 I gave you the opportunity. I did everything that I can do so that I can confidently make this decision and say, boom. Because a lot of women will leave a man that was maybe in a season or a situation that maybe was a good man. Because I don't think people give enough grace nowadays. Mm -hmm. And you might very well be leaving a good man because you think that the grass is greener on the other side, but the Ooh. grass is greener where you water it. Come so on. I wanted to make sure I was watering my grass and my grass was real fluffy and real nice. And I could confidently make the decision that, 
okay, no, I was happy with my decision because I did everything. my due diligence. Yes. I did everything I needed to do. And so now when I walk away, I'm confident in my decision because this is, I, I crossed every avenue that I could possibly cross to make sure I made the right decision for me. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel like at any point, even before making that decision, did you ever feel like failure at any point? Initially, when I um, when I found out about the children, I was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. I was uh, being a trainer. Yeah. And I was traveling to all these cities. So initially, I was like, wow, is it because like I didn't have give him enough attention, time? Um, I, I did question if I was neglecting my household. Mm -hmm. Um, there were a lot of thoughts that came to mind. And then as I started to affirm myself, because I'm like, hold on, hold on, you're a woman. And just because, you know, think about the times that he's been busy. Think about right. the times where he's been traveling. Right. Think about the times he's been on tour. You could have pulled a him on him. Yeah, you could have pulled a him on him. Why was that not your thought? Right. So I said, no, 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 no. And that's why it's important to go to therapy. That's yes. why it's important to make to to do your due diligence because you have to make sure that you make decisions from a healed standpoint and you look at things and don't say, okay, wait. Because my paradigm instantly was like, did I miss a meal? And I'm like, no, that doesn't mean that someone's okay to cheat on you just because you had a busy day or right. as you're pursuing your goals. You yeah. know, they're going to get money for all of y'all, for your yeah. entire family. Why would you have to pick and choose between your career and marriage? I said, it can't be that, but I'm not going to lie. That definitely was a thought. Like, where did I miss the mark? But then again, that's the type of person I am, too. I'm the type Take of person that's accountability. Yeah. Like, I know I wasn't perfect. Right. I know I got an attitude. Mm -hmm. I know there's been times that I've probably done things that wasn't pleasurable to him, but at what point did we not have a discussion? Right. Right. At what point did you not show up? Even in therapy, because, yes, he had two children, but I found out about one at first. And I thought that I could work through that. And I remember being in therapy and me making very clear what I needed mm. to make this work. Wow. And why did this happen and trying to understand. And it's almost, I remember before even I found out about the second child, I was I was preparing myself to walk away. Wow. So I was making the extra bank accounts. I was, I ain't gonna lie. If you're giving me 200, if, if groceries is 200, I need 400, brother. Mm -hmm. Like I was setting myself up to leave because you don't let your left hand know what, what your right hand is doing. Come on. So yeah. I was getting the safety deposit box. I put my, make sure my children's passports were renewed because you need a husband's signature for all of that. I, I prepared and planned for this. Sheesh. So I was planning my exit before I even made it known I was exiting. And I was taking stuff or a hard drive out of the computer. Like I was planning, but I was still serving that meal with a smile. I was still cleaning the house. I was still folding laundry. I was still doing everything. But in my mind, I was tapped out. Like checked out. Here. Yeah. Okay. I remember being in therapy. And the moment where I knew I was like, yo, I'm done. Is because I felt like I'm telling you exactly what I needed from you. I'm telling you exactly how to fix this. I'm telling you exactly how... In the midst of all this disrespect, there's still a chance to salvage this marriage. Wow. And imagine the way I looked at my relationship at the moment is there's a well and a well is meant to hold water. Imagine a man buying you gifts, but that's not what I asked for. Mm. Imagine a man doing Everything other than what you ask for. You're putting rocks in the well. You're putting sand in the well. You're putting air in the well. You're putting hay in the well. You're putting green in the well. But the well needs fucking water. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing the most, but you're doing. And and in your mind, in his mind, he's like, but I'm, I'm doing, doing this. all of this. Yeah. I'm doing that's not that what, what I, I asked want. you yeah. for. Mm -hmm. So if you can disrespect me this much publicly. Oof. The apology has to be just as public and the apology has to be just as intentional. And I shouldn't have to direct you on what to do. And after I took the courtesy to direct you on how to fix this, you're still doing everything but that. Mm -mm. Child, mm -mm. sometimes it's not your job to understand stupid. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm out because... I just felt like I was like dealing with a mental midget. Like, yeah, I was what are you not understanding? I laid it out for you. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you as a woman have to say, he does not want to. Mm. And that's hard to hard face. Hard to swallow. Yeah, hard to swallow. Someone I invested all my time in. Someone, mm -hmm. you know, I gave myself to. Someone I built. Someone I, yo, I went through everything. I, 
I literally grew up with this man. I knew him for more years than I had without him. Wow. I met you at 17 years old. So Ooh. now we're making these decisions in our 30s. I've known you more than I haven't known you. Mm. That's hard to walk away from. Mm. But you have to love yourself but more yes. to say, you know what? God has better and greater for me. I shouldn't have to fight for this. Mm -mm. I'm out. At least fight this hard. Fight this hard. Well, woo. I, I, I definitely want to stay on that topic, but I want to to get to the other side because okay. you made it to the other side. Now you're on the market yeah. and you want to be married again. And I really want people to understand that divorce, but not denied, you know, and you what now that you're on the market, how is important is it now for you to have a godly relationship with what you're looking for, that man that's going to find you? So I'm going to be so honest. <laughs> <laughs> when I first got on the market, which was what? Like 2020? Yeah. I wasn't focused on God. Outside. I was outside. Outside. I was outside. I was like, oh my God. I think because I committed so and was young. a wife so, so young, young, it was almost like I never had my hot girl stage. So I was, I wanted to, I wanted to date. But then I ran into hurdles, even on my first date. Ooh. Like my first date outside of my marriage, I wanted to die. <laughs> I mean, literally, I was like, that bad? It was so bad. <laughs> Can I tell you? Yeah, it's tell us. Oh my God. And it's so bad though. Okay. So the first day I was all excited, like, oh my God, I'm going on my date. And it felt weird because it was like my first time without my husband. And we went to this really dope spot to eat. And I'll never forget, like, the guy was like, oh, I'll pick you up. And I'm like, you can't know where I live. No, right. I'll meet you, you know. But thank you. Like, that's the right thing to do. But no, thank you. So we get to the restaurant. And we walk in. As we walk in, he holds my hand. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Holding the hands, little butterflies, right? And we go and we sit down. Mind you, that's all I ever did was hold that man's hand. So now when we're sitting down, we're eating dinner and oxtails come out, right? <laughs> As you know this story. <laughs> and so oxtails come out and he's like eating his food and I'm eating my food and we're having great conversation. And out of nowhere, he goes, can I say it, Anna? I can say it here. Oh my God, it's so crass. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all. So he goes out of nowhere, he's eating the oxtails. He goes, I can't wait to eat your pussy tonight like these oxtails. Check. Oh. Check. Check, check, please. Because, <laughs> sir, I didn't even kiss you. And you over here talking about what you're going to do, what tonight, to who, to huh? <laughs> Because I don't think men know how much of a turn off they are. It was such a turn off. Not, men, men think that that stuff turns you off. It, it is a turn off. Oh, Child, like I was clutching my pearls for like a month thinking about what this man said to me. Like, what made you think we were what going made you, there? What made you think that? Like, seriously, like he's what never made you talk think that? to me like that. Like, I just held your hand walking in. That's the most physical contact we had. And you said what to me? And it, I, for a second, I was like, I started looking. This is what women do, right? I started looking at what I had on. Mm -hmm. Like, did I give the wrong impression? But no, 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 girl. You didn't do nothing wrong. I think too many times we as women, we start to like validate their actions. Yeah, making excuses and for them. And yeah. making excuses. No, 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 no. I'm supposed to be a fly bitch. I'm yeah. Supposed I'm supposed to look, step out. look good. That don't mean I'm... <laughs> so wow. then I started thinking like, is this what women do now? Wow. Like, is this the norm? Like just and so then I start like is this what everybody does? Is this what dating is now? Like a man takes you out, buys a freaking meal, and just assumes he's gonna get in your drawers. Like oh. I was like, cause I haven't been dating in. But guess what? Um, in my years, been that easy for them, because oh, just a woman would do anything just to get a free meal. Child, you know how many meals I could buy by myself. We don't even need to go there. But okay. I was just so appalled that I was traumatized, and I didn't even want to go like on a second date with somebody else. So now we get to the second date. Not with him. Right. But we get to the second date now. So now, <laughs> oh my God, dating is so hard. So now we get to the second date and this guy, he's really handsome, super, you know, nice, polite, et cetera. He's a God-fearing man. So I'm like, oh, good. I'm into church too. You got to come visit my church. Da, 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 da. So I'm now I'm excited because I'm like, okay, well, I told myself, although I wanted to be in my hot girl stage and date for a bit, 
when I do tie down, it has to be someone who can lead me in Christ, right? It has to be someone who believes in Christ because in my marriage, my husband never wanted to come to church with me. So I got tired of always going to church with me and my children by ourselves. So I said, this next round, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. it's we all going as a family. Yeah. So I'm so excited. I'm like, this man likes God. Da, 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 da. Then he goes, yes. Yeah. So like, you cook? Me. No. Lion. No one damn well I cook. But like, why are you asking? I, I would, like, the, it was a off topic. Like, it just like, well, do you cook? And then he said something like, we were, I changed the topic. And he was like, but you're Latina. Like, how do you not cook? Stereotypes. Now you stereotyping me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, this man don't know my personality. I was like, you about to get the spicy me. And I said, no, I don't cook. Like, and in my mind, I've been cooking since I was seven years old. My abuela taught me to cook. I've been, I've been cooking at a young age. That's why I said I was a wife before I was even a wife. So, but in this season, I'm like, uh-uh, I'm in my... And why do you think you're going to get season. that? Like, yeah. So I'm like, why does he keep bringing up food? So I'm like, okay. So, you know, like, what are your hobbies? Like, do you play sports? Like, just getting to know him. He bring up the cooking again. <laughs> <laughs> he said. So there's nothing that you make. He looks so disturbed. So I said, yeah, I make reservations for niggas like you to take me out. And he looked like, and I was like, listen. If this is all you got to bring and all you want to talk about, like, it's I'm like you sorry. Got a, a, a yeah, like, are you looking for a maid, yeah. your mother, or something else? Because I keep talking to you about your int what your interests are, and clearly you're so focused on what I'm going to make for you. I said, this is not going to work. I said, check, please. That was my theme. Like, any, like I wouldn't even wait for the date to be over. Everything was check, please, check, please, check, please, for a good amount of time. And then I was just like, you know what? These men just do not know how to court women. Cause where's my flowers? Mm. Where's this? Where's that? Like I'm a soft girl. I'm a lover girl. Like yeah. I love stuff like that. Yeah. And so for a hot minute after that, I was just like, I'm turns it night. Yeah. I'm outside. I'm wilding. I'm having a good time. Okay, you want to buy me a drink? You want to do me that? Now it's where I was like, okay, this was my last like hot girl summer, and now I'm ready for like a real relationship. So that's where I'm at now. So now with you being in a real relationship, like what is your your standard? Like, you know, is it like a, a biblical principle? Is it just like, you know, something that you just want to make sure is totally different from what you had before? Like what 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 is what is your expectation now? I have a huge list of expectations now because I think that in my soft girl era, I learned a lot about dating. I learned that um I think mentally I was where I was in my marriage and I'm realizing that a lot of things has have changed. It's really ghetto out here in the dating world and there's a Come lot on. of married men in the in the pissing pool. Um and it's just really raw. So now I think that in the past I've allowed I'm a very humble person. I see people beyond like you know how like women have long lists of dating and it's like, oh, I need him to be this yeah. tall and he needs to make six figures and he needs to take me to this restaurant. It's like, girl, you can't even take yourself to that restaurant. Oh, on your on your, on your day you get paid either. Right. Either. But me, I really can do all of that. Mm -hmm. And I really have been doing all that. I'm really about that life, you know? So why are you being so humble to the point where you're accepting that? Yes. And I think that yeah. in my level of humility, I have also allowed a lot of low hanging fruit wow. to be around me. Mm. And so now I'm in a season where I'm like, nah, like I really talk that talk and I really walk that walk. And so therefore, when I say I have these standards, it's not so much what's in your bank account, even though that does matter to me, but it's more of, what your character is, what's your integrity, integrity. Yep. Um, <laughs> even your hygiene. Like, because I said, like, do women even ask things like this? Because I want to know when was the last time you swapped out your toothbrush? Mm. Because then I want to know about your health. Like, I need to know these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now my list is, I'm more... I'm more focused on can you lead me because I've been a real ass nigga so long that I'm ready to like take the title off, mm -hmm. take off the coat, and I'm ready to enter this season being led. Mm -hmm. Can you teach me something new? I'm tired of being the teacher. Mm -hmm. I do that every day. I teach master classes. I, t I coach people. Can you teach me something new? Can you intellectually? So I always tell people, you have to unlock me here before you unlock me. Stimulate me in my mind. 
right? And so in this season, I have a long, strong list that I, I had to ask myself, what are your non-negotiables? Like what really is, realistically, what are your non-negotiables? Because what starts to happen is, oh, it's okay, he doesn't have a job, I have money, mm -hmm. right? But was that one of your non-negotiables? So the more you start to entertain someone that doesn't make that list, the more you start to accept, well, yeah, he does have a lot of kids, but oh, he's not that bad. Oh, well, he does give me money here, so that's not that bad. And then now you you're throwing excuses. your whole, you know, you're making excuses, and now you're throwing that whole list away. So now if you don't come with my list of non-negotiables, I'm not even giving you a date. Last week alone, I turned down eight dates. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's what people think, that just because you're single, that they probably think, like, you don't have it. No, I have First standards. of all, I... I need people to understand I am single. I am not lonely. Come on. I am single. I am not desperate. I am single and I'm selectively single. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And one thing you also mentioned, too, is the piss in the dating pool. But this is an unpopular opinion. I think a lot of it comes from women, too. Mm. How so elaborate? Because I just feel like a lot of women want these men to bring everything to the table, but they bring absolutely nothing, nothing. to the table. Bring nothing to the I table. Feel bad like for men these like days. they and I and I do. And sometimes it's so yeah. hard for me to be on women's side when I see and I hear some of the things that women say. Oh, my man needs to make six figures, seven figures. I mean, six figures. But do you even know how to make six figures? Yeah. Like oh oh my, my I need to my man needs to pay all and my bills. Can you pay your own bills? Another man to make That's six great, figures. But what do you bring? It's what you really bring even if she doesn't bring right it's the entitlement yes that and I, I that's what that. annoys me yes like, girl because remember in our granny's days they stood home they didn't have anything but to they bring did, to the table but, but they, not in that way right but there was still but certain they things they took care of yeah it's the entitlement for me it's the i feel bad for like men that are bam's age mm -hmm. like i have a nephew taste um son mm -hmm. who when he was dating when he first got to college the girl was like uh-uh we can't go on a date because you didn't even ask me my cash app are you a woman or are you a prostitute yeah like woman oh you gotta pay for my babysitter if you take me out first of all if a man asks you on a date and you don't have a babysitter say babe thank you for asking me i don't have let him offer let it him to, offer. To, to you get what i'm saying so i just feel like women are too entitled they want all these things and it's not necessarily to say that you need to be a pick me but it also has to you need to know your standard is like you need to know what like i always tell people know your value but really know your value but what how does that make a great man like okay let's say that you have this man he makes six figures and he's tricking on you but now he's beating you mm. he's cheating on you come on he don't like children come on he don't like god how did but he don't, he don't like he, god he don't even really like you he don't come on so like how does that make him a great man like come on yeah like it just shows Worried me, about like, the wrong thing. are you a woman of substance and that's why a lot of times when i am dating I can look at a man and say, I'm never going on a date with him again because I can tell that his level of conversation is only good as the last woman that he had. Yeah. And you might just be a little bit too high for that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Another thing that you spoke about was that soft girl era. And I know that's a, it's so crazy because all these things become trends, but I don't think people really, really understand it. And it's just like I understand software era because I'm kind of in that way, too. Like, I, I'm tired of working so hard and do like I want to be that one to like, you know, OK, I stay home. I'm going to cook. I'm going to clean. You know, I want to, you know, feel that way, you know, but I also understand that there's a level of execution that needs to happen. Correct. But for women like us, what does soft girl, soft girl era look like and what do we have to lay down to pick that up? I think soft girl or it's so funny because my mom reminded me the other day you although you've been a woman of power for so long and you play sports because so I have a lot of masculine um traits to mm -hmm. me but in a relationship I know how to be soft okay and she said it's crazy because one of your goals she found one of my notebooks and one of my goals was to be married to a wealthy man so that I can do all the charity work that I wanted to do wow so that's so crazy that that's always been a desire of mine, but I don't feel like as a woman, I have to sit back and wait for a man to make that happen mm -hmm. to me. So therefore I've been proactively working on my goals myself. However, soft girl is beyond that. Soft girl means like, even with my children, I'm a mm -hmm. soft girl because I don't take out the garbage. Mm -hmm. One of y'all better go do that. Mm -hmm. One of y'all gotta bring up the groceries. And if I don't have the children around to bring up the groceries, I have Peapod. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just not doing, there's certain things I'm not doing. I don't wow. mess with my car. I don't mess with certain things. Soft girl is when I get out of my car and I'm walking into like a grocery or something like that, I don't 
I don't open the door. I wait for someone to open it for me. You know, if someone wants to pull out a chair and I always tell people, if it's hard for you to get into soft girl era because you have to be strong so, so long, create an alter ego. My mm -hmm. alter ego's name is Queen Philomena. Mm -hmm. So I call her Philly. And I think of Philly as she's, first of all, she's British. She is a queen. She's never, she's a princess or a queen. She's never, she's royalty pretty much. She's never known what struggle is. Mm -hmm. She's never like experienced certain things. So a lot of times I have to tap into her and say, well, how would she respond to this? Wow. And a lot of times, like, so you know how women do that fake on first dates? They do that fake pull out the wallet. I'm not fake pulling out my wallet. I'm sitting there just oh, waiting for exactly. him to go do That's what he thing. do. We, I feel like women, and it's kind of off topic, I feel like women always feel like they can finesse a man to do something. And it's I mean, like, come on. Yeah, I'm not doing that. So it's just certain things that if I have to tap into my alter ego, it's Philly. Why, mm. How would she respond to that? Mm. You think that Philly would pick up her groceries? No, she would not. Mm. She would never. <laughs> So it's just cousins. Things, I would never. Cousins. And yeah. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so like if someone listening right now and they want to start their soft girl era right now, what are some practical steps that they can do to to tap into that? I think it'd be nice for them to study certain women in the Bible. Mm. I think that's good. I did a series where I was watching this YouTube series. I had to send it to you. And also Times Magazine had this um, magazine of just women in the Bible wow. and how they behave. I know that helped me tap into my soft girl era. And I think that they need to not have a wall up. I think sometimes we exhibit our masculinity a lot and demonstrate it a lot because we're so guarded and we're worried about being hurt but also have faith in god that you know it's okay you are the ceo of your life you promote and demo accordingly mm -hmm. and so it's okay in this season to say this is how i want to be treated create an image in your mind of how you want to be treated make a list of your negotiables and non-negotiables mm -hmm. because there's some stuff that we do have to negotiate yeah right? mm -hmm. when we like someone it's okay and once you create that list create that alter ego i think the alter ego will help them a lot and then just say you know also have a high level of awareness wow. because there's certain people that bring out certain things in us Ooh. whether it's friendships yeah. relationships jobs and you have to be aware of that like <clears throat> i was telling calvin the story about how i had to grab mm -hmm. the man's finger that's why i don't do trucking anymore well i do but i don't to that in that way yeah i know that trucking brought a, a lot of it was not bringing out the soft girl in me mm -hmm. i was having to walk into these yeah places like, a like you gotta yo, show yo, them yo. that you don't play and it wasn't fitting i i miss trucking money so much but it just wasn't fitting my current goals at the mm -hmm. moment and it wasn't making me so happy. good and that was about to be my next question mm -hmm. like you know tapping into that are there things that you're going to have to put down if you really want to tap into that if i want to tap into this if i want to because you have to remember we attract things to us right mm -hmm. laws of attraction is real so if i want to attract this behavior, if I want to attract this lifestyle, if I want to attract this soft girl era, if I want to attract all these things to me, there are certain things that you will have to walk away from and a lot of people that you will also equally have to walk away from. There's a gentleman that I was dating and I liked him a lot and he was so good in many other aspects. He was definitely a provider. He was definitely a protector. He just brought, he didn't bring out the softness mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. He didn't have that romantic side. And I said, you know what? This is one of my non-negotiables. So unfortunately, although I liked him a lot, I was very much attracted to him. I had to let him go. Right. Because right. you're not meeting my non-negotiables. And it's hard to see, we create the list, but will you actually follow through with um, it? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You be disciplined. Yeah. You have to be disciplined. Because the glory you is on to. the other side. When you do know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, uh, you operate really differently. And the last thing I do want to get into before we wrap up is, you know, one thing that I'm I'm big on when it comes to virtue is waiting till marriage. Mm -hmm. And how do you, how important do you think abstinence is now, especially for our generation, you know, women who are single, who maybe desire to be married and stuff like that. How important is it to abstain and really allow men to know you in a different way and allow them to, you know, really know your spirit, your soul and stuff before you give them that body and waiting till marriage. So initially when I got um, in my hot girl stage, I was not absent. I'm not going to hold you. I was like, oh, my God, I feel like a kid in a candy shop. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much everywhere. <laughs> so oh my God. And because all I knew was my husband, I was like, oh, this is what I because a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. That's my virginity to my um, ex-husband. So I was like, oh, my God. 
God, this is what it's like. And I'm not gonna lie, I said to myself, child, I would have left that man sooner if I knew this was what it's like. <laughs> so I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm the no, only one. Yeah, no, I, I don't pump fake. Because there are people that out there that feel the same yes, way. I don't pump fake, I don't pump fake. But then again, I wasn't wilding out. It's not like I was wilding out, but I definitely was doing stuff. And then I said to myself, like, hold on, mm. because I'm not going to become this washed up girl. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to become this. Um, how do you say? How do you say in the English? I know in Spanish we say manusia, like like passed around, like touched mm -hmm. around a lot. And also, I think that what helped me um, also start to choose abstinence was the fact that my son is older and if i'm being in these venues i don't want people saying like oh i oh had God. that chance to mm -hmm. i know that, that. that yeah mm -hmm. this is a different caliber woman here okay mm -hmm. i have platinum ovaries you see my children <laughs> um and so for me i want to say in the last like two years me and my friend mm -hmm. yeah we've been abstinent for about two years and so, like, like the last person I was dating, mm -hmm. that was an issue mm -hmm. for him, and that was my non-negotiable mm -hmm. to let it go. Yeah. And how do you feel, like, you know, as as it pertains to, like, you know, being like, when do you communicate that with a man? Because I know, like, you know, you 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 give off that sexy, you give up, give off that boss, you give off that yeah, wife, like you give off all think, of that. Like, if like, you look at me and you look at my lifestyle and you look at like the industries that I've been in, you probably assume like, mm -hmm. oh, she's done a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually haven't. Right. You know. Um. So. I I'm very big on, I couldn't even show you DM. So it's like someone reached out to me um, recently. He said something kind of flirty. It wasn't disrespectful, but it was, it leaned towards that. And I was like, hey, just so you know, I'm in a season where I'm abstinent. So mm -hmm. if that's not for you, please don't waste your time with me. Wow. I'm so very amazing. And how how important is that? Like, because I know some women or even men, they feel, especially men, they feel like if I say this, like, she probably gonna think I'm gay. She probably gonna think like, I don't care what they think. Like, there's a lawyer who's been like, Oh my God, he's been trying to pursue me for like a year. And I remember when he initially reached out to me last year, I said, just so you know, like I see your posts and I see how you maneuver and I'm not going to assume that I know your life, but I'm just letting you know, like I'm in a season where I'm abstinent. Mm -hmm. So I'm not having sex. Like, with And you, if that's yeah. an issue with you and you need that in a relationship, I don't even want to open that door. Because I said that to him, he went from changing how he sent me, like he would just send me DMs, like funny stuff. He started uh, sending me more stuff like uh, the Bible, wow. like our conversations wow. and our texts were different. So don't be afraid to assert where you are in life because you'll be surprised Ooh. that there's someone that might it's desire the same thing as you. And they just didn't think that someone would be on the same page yes. as that. Granted, I never started dating him, but it, our friendship flourish in that in that manner in that way because yeah. i was upfront about it and i hope that encourages people because i think that people are just so scared of what people are gonna think yeah, and never been I, I think i think abstaining to marriage is so honorable I, i'm gonna be so honest with you though i can't even sit here in front like that's always gonna be the mo like right. i pray about it but i so so i i struggle with that i feel like if i found a man who was really at the caliber of what I really desire and wanted. A part of me feels like, hey, I can be engaged and married like in less than a year if he's mm -hmm. the man that God sent for me and I get that like God wink, like that's me, that's for me, that's for me. Yes, I can wait. If it's something long term and I'm really mm -hmm. in love with him, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I'll, I'd have the courage to. Yeah. I hope that I would. No, it's but funny to say that. Like, like yeah, it's funny you say that. I was actually watching a couple um, recently um, and they got married. I don't know when did they get married, but I know that, you know, they came into it knowing that they were going to wait till marriage. And it was more of the man's idea than the woman. Well, she wasn't really feeling it too much, too much, uh, but she did it. But she didn't really think he would be serious about it. Mm -hmm. And they got engaged and, you know, she really wanted like this big, like, you know, um, destination wedding and stuff like that. And then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So literally like in their mind, they probably thought like at max, it probably been would have been like a two year maybe three year situation but they didn't expect it to be as long as it was so you know she started to just really feel defeated about it you know because they were engaged and I'm not gonna say the next part because I don't want people to get the wrong idea but because everybody can't do what everybody does right. but um you know basically like you know she just started to get defeated because she felt like we're already engaged we're gonna get married like let's just go to a courthouse and then you know this you know but then they also felt like you know God knows your heart posture mm -hmm. and he knows like what you set out to do and if this is what you set out to do then let's just do it all the way but they did they did say that had they known like basically 
the process wouldn't have been that long mm-hmm. for them. If, if you know, if they knew it was going to be that long, they probably would have shortened the process, um, you know, and would have gotten married. And that's not to say they just get married to have sex. But, right. you know, also knowing yourself because you have to have that conversation. Well, you know, Lily, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I, you know, I want to abstain to a marriage. Um, but this is what that timeline looks like mm-hmm. for me. Like, it looks like, you know, in this amount of time, I'm going to know if I want to marry you. And if I decide that I am going to marry you, I'm going to propose to you. And by this time, you know, I expect to be married by this time. That way you know how to operate in your relationship. Right. I think it's it's hard because it's been easy for me personally to abstain these last two years because I'm, I'm, I'm an energy person. Like, if you ask me what was my type right now as a man, it's hard for me to say, like, just description-wise because it's an energy. Mm-hmm. But I have to say there have been times where I've been tempted where I can see someone and instantly that thought comes in. Like, a, a woman knows if you would sleep with a man or not. Mm-hmm. You just know. You see him and it gives you that, <laughs> like, the little tiger come out. Yeah, that little. <laughs> <laughs> so you either know mm-hmm. and then I think that you're, you have to really pray on that because yeah. that's a huge temptation. Temptation. Yes. So, like, I don't know if I can be in a long term relationship for so many years of staying in, especially with someone that I really like. like, like that. I'm yeah. Here. I don't yeah. Know if I do yeah. It. I hope God lead me to it. But I ain't gonna sit here in front like, yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's what it's gonna be. So I what do you think? What do you that. think? What do you think would be like your cutoff like, that's time? Not, uh, that's not my big ministry. Like that's not my big one, right? Like, what, what what do you think that timeline for you is just like? This is the like if I'm digging you, like I'm in love with you. You already said that you gonna wife me up, like. Is either we getting it in or so honest. I I I believe that the next relationship I get into, if it's a serious one, I'll be I'll be married within the year. Okay. And anything after that, like I'm no young chicken. Yeah. I'm about to be forty two. Yeah. yeah. It don't even look you, like you it. gotta know if you if you, if you want me or not. You wanna hold them or if you wanna fold them. And I'm not here to <laughs> date for fun anymore. Yeah. I have my little hot girl stuff. Like now in dating, it's either I'm dating to marry because if I don't find these qualifications that I will marry this man, I'm not really wasting too much time. Yeah, we don't got time. In least. and out. Yeah. Yeah, well, guys, this was so good. Yeah. I know y'all was blessed. It's giving raw, like, it's giving <laughs> open. It's giving vulnerable. I love it, and I appreciate you for so so much for coming on here. And I really hope that you guys see that God can, you know, stick his hand in a mess, turn it into a message, turn okay. your test into a testimony, and you can come out of it greater and better and more expectant because I know your next marriage is going to be so amazing. I can't wait to see it because I already know that there's so much obedience. There's so much that you've done for the kingdom like there's just so much that you have done for god that he honors and that the blessing is going to be so tremendous so i'm excited i can't wait you're gonna be outside you're right i'll be giving it up and people and it's all gonna be for god's glory amen it is all gonna be god for god's glory so i know y'all were blessed so and as always we always end it off in prayer so lily will you do the honors of praying us out me yes, yes for me is yeah. this okay um, father god we thank you so much oh celestial mo high, most high high being father god you are the one you are alpha omega beginning and the end i pray for every single person under the sound of my voice right now every single person that's you know a part of a virtue the virtue way and every single person that's in this season that is just looking for guidance looking to be stronger in their faith and looking to be stronger with god i ask that he pretty much just guide you in this season that you build relationship with him and that he builds you up so that you know your value, but not just your value in the world, but most importantly, your value in his kingdom. Father God, we thank you for clarity. We thank you for relationships. We thank you for the courage that we need as women and men to execute um, the things that we need, but also to, like I said earlier, to promote and demote accordingly. Align us with people that are with divine appointments that are for us that can increase our territory and allow us to continuously be a showcase of your glory so that we can show people that it's okay we're real people we're real christians with real issues and real results but we still love you and we still honor you and you give us the opportunity to uh, get it right every single time in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see y'all on the next episode no time is slow Anticipated this moment for much too long now Nothing stopping, what is mine, what is destined No second guessing, it's time to shine now Created different, no comp-